We give our greetings this morning to the congregation here. We're thankful to be here and glad that everyone is able to be out and about in this nice rainy day. You know, I'm thinking it's October, that wet stuff we see out there could be that four-letter word that I don't like to mention called snow, and I'm very thankful that we've got this wet stuff because it's a lot easier for me to scoop than that white stuff is. Again, we're going to have a study this morning, and uh, this is a study that was presented yesterday in uh, Shadron at the lectures, and I thought it was an excellent material, and uh, Albert Johnson uh, was the one who presented this yesterday as I taking all my notes and everything, seeing how fast my fi my fingers could fly. And then as there's a few little things in there, I don't really know why he wrote it down, but, you know, that's just a few compared to a lot when I write it down compared to when I type it down. And so at least I got the gist of what he was having to say. I had to go back and, and, and change a couple of things. He had a couple of quotes uh, in there. This, and I had to go back and I, I verify, tried to verify them. And the quotes that he gave, I couldn't verify. So I went with some things that... I believed I could verify, and so that's what we wanted to look at. It's, it's important, you know, when we promote something on Facebook, on the internet, or to somebody else, we need to be able to have something that backs up what we're teaching, don't we? We need to have something that says, you know what, I can find that, I can verify that, and so what I found was, again, just a minor detail, but, you know, sometimes we have to major in minors in order to get it correct. Our study this morning is grounding the home against ungodly media. And if you look at the scripture that I have up there, you know, the scripture is from the psalmist, the 101th, yeah, 101th, 101st Psalm, verse 3, 101st Psalm, and verse number 3, it says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. The very first part of that scripture is what we want to dwell with this morning. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. And I might add, this is one of the scriptures he didn't use yesterday, but it popped up in my head and I put it in my notes anyway. What are we talking about? As we're talking about grounding a home against ungodly media, we need to realize that there is a battle going on. A battle that is going on right now in this world that we need to be aware of and we need to be ready to combat. To combat it when it rears its ugly head, where it may be outside the Lord's church, it may even be inside the body of Christ. There was a person by the name of Sun Tzu, T-Z-U, and I'm sure that's not how he pronounced it. But anyway, he had a, an article called The Art of War. And in that article, he wrote this. He said, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. But if you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. So what we look at saying, you know, we need to know ourselves. We need to know where we stand. We need to know where we believe in order when a battle comes up that we're prepared to fight against it. Now, just like this brother said yesterday, this is not a topic that is talked about very often. It's not something we say, oh, yeah, we're going to go and we're going to talk about the media. Now, I know when I talk about the media in this day and age, we know what we're talking about. And some people call it fake news. And others don't call it fake news at all. We're not even going to get into that today. Aren't you glad? We're going to leave it outside there this morning. But we're going to talk about the media that we do use. The enemy is well around us and the enemy is well armed. And we need to know who it is and how to defeat him. Now, when I grew, it was growing up, this is the kind of television set, except ours was a lot smaller than that. Ours was about like a 7-inch or a 9-inch TV. I mean, it was a, had a great big stand that it set in, but it was a little, maybe a seven to nine inch TV set, black and white. And of course, your remote control was the children. You know, you go to a chat chat. Of course, there was only three channels to choose from at the time. But this was typical. We'd bring all the kids from the neighborhood in. Why? Because most people didn't have a television set at all. So we'd sit around at the television set and we'd what? watch what was on. For me, it was Captain Kangaroo the Mickey Mouse Club, it was Hopalong Cassidy, it was 
the Lone Ranger, Sky King, shows like that that I was able to watch on that little TV set. So that was a media that was coming in to our home and we allowed it in our home because we couldn't see anything wrong with it coming in our home. Well, of course, after that media, this is the media that we grew up with too. And that this is not what we would look at today. This is one of the first computers out there that people were able to take and put into their homes. It wasn't considered a laptop. This was not a laptop. This was your desktop computer. You can see the tape machine beside it because that's where a lot of your programs were on. You see the floppy disk, which was a five and a quarter inch floppy disk. Now this was fancy because he had two floppy disks. We look at that and that was the first one that came on the scene that was affordable. And of course we look at that, you know, and, and think, well, that's no big deal. And of course now we do have laptops, but guess what? This is the first laptop. And if you can look at that thing, you know that that was not much of a laptop. You had to be, you know, strong. You had to be able to. It was invented by the Osborne Computers. The first portable computer was a success. Sales reached over 10,000 units a month. IBM then launched the IBM 5155 Portable, a personal computer in 1984. In 1988, the Compact Computer launched its first laptop PC with VGA graphics. That was something exciting, wasn't it? And of course, we had the, the Radio Shack ones that were TR somethings. And, we had all, and, and, and all of a sudden, what happened to home computers? Home computers went from something that would fill up this wall to something that was small, compatible to, to the home. It was something that we could actually carry with us. I remember my first laptop I had, it wasn't put out as a laptop, but I thought it was, it was the Apple IIc. It had a carry handle on the, on the keyboard and you had a floppy disk built in and you could take it with you if you went on a trip and you could plug it into the TV set and watch and call, because that's what we used for our monitors, was a TV set. And so I take the wire and hook it up to the TV set and that's how, that was my first supposedly laptop. But what happens to everything that can be used for good? Well, it happens to everything we can be used for good. And that's why I had that scripture up there earlier. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. That's something, there are little decals that you can actually buy and you can put those on your TV set to maybe give you a remembrance of those things. You know, would I watch that if Jesus was here sitting with me right now? Would I say, well, that's okay. It, it only has a little bit of, a little bit of what? Language? Sex, filth, only a little bit. Would I view it if Jesus was sitting right beside me? There's the dark side and the good side, isn't there? We know that <clears throat> even the radio can be used for good and bad. Television can be used for good and bad. Remember when the VCR tapes came out? They can be used for good or bad. And of course, the computers can be used for good and for evil. The dark side, there is death and destruction, both physically and spiritually, when we start talking about what's available to us today. <clears throat> you think you can't die from doing things you see on the computer? Have you ever tried eating Tide Pods? <clears throat> I am guarantee you I'd die if I ate a Tide Pod. I wouldn't know what to do. First of all, I couldn't get it down. <clears throat> but secondly, you'd look at that and think, why? Why would you want to? But there is a dark side. It's later than we want to think. We think, oh, well, that's no big deal. You know, evil isn't that prevalent amongst us. It's not really something we have to worry about. You know, never heard of the name Howard Stern? Howard Stern was kicked off of regular radio because he was so filthy. Well, guess what? He's up on the internet, up not on the internet, but on what, what are those? What are those stations? Sirius? Sirius, Sirius XM and, and uh, those, those, he's up there. What? He's got a huge following. He's making millions of dollars a year because he's got that filth that he has and people following him. In Ephesians, the fifth chapter, in verses 11 and 12, Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 11 and 12 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of the darkness, but rather reprove them or expose them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them 
in secret. <clears throat> Unfortunately, they're not even done in secret anymore, are they? It used to be everything was, was there and it wasn't in secret. It was there. It was something that, you know, you, you, you had to search and find. You know, you have to be a, searching these things out to find them. And now it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's, you know, it's everywhere. Everything we look at, there's an enemy and we need to prepare against that ungodly media. And of course, we're going to talk about pornography. We need to look and understand that pornography is an epidemic. Pornography, in the use of it is wrong. Pornography is used by death that brings a spiritual separation from God. And we must flee pornography in order to be free of sin. Now we think, oh, well, it's no big deal. Pornography, that's, that's something that, you know, we don't even talk about today. But I remember growing up and there was Playboy. I don't know if it's still out there or not. I'm guessing it is. Think the Hustler magazines. All those magazines, they were out for what? For one reason. One reason only. What's the definition of porn, John? You know, you know, everybody has a different definition of porn. Did you ever think about that? What's pornography to me may not be pornography to you. Well, here's the definition of porn. Among those who use porn, only less than one-third of the general population adults thought full nude dancing, fully nude still pictures, sex scenes in a written story, texting about sexual acts with someone you don't know, or partially nude show constitute porn. Did you catch that? Full nudity, sex scenes, sexual acts, partial nude, those constitute pornography. It's addictive in nature. Among users of porn, only 55% of the general population adults think porn is definitely addictive. And yet you can see it's addiction. 16. And if you don't know what that is, good for you. That's something the teenagers and even older. There was a, um, who was that guy who was a Wiener. Wiener in New York. What did he get busted for? For 16, showing pictures to an underage girl. That's what 16 is all about. There's a group out there called Covenant Eyes. It says teens and young adults are one-third as likely to have sent a nude image over the, the Internet. One-third one third of teens and young adults have sent a picture of themselves naked over the internet. You think there's not a problem? You hear about these busts all the time, don't we? They were busted for having pornographic material on their computer. They had shared pictures over the internet. But yet, we need to make certain. We need to realize it is an epidemic. We need to realize it is wrong. We need to realize that Satan's, it's a tool, one of his many tools, and we need to flee from it, and we need to realize that pornographic material is gaining acceptance throughout the world, not just here in the United States, but throughout the world. Pornographic business has grown to over a billion dollars a year. And that's a small number. That's, that's the, okay, here's the, the lowest number we could come up with. I've seen numbers up to the 10 to $15 billion business. You think this isn't something we need to be aware of? The statistics I could find was adult videos. We know what those are, right? Triple X rated, X rated. The X-rated business in adult videos is $500 million to $1.8 billion a year. $500 million to $1.8 billion a year. People viewing adult, got to put those quotation marks around it, filth a year. The internet, over a billion dollars a year. 
because you can go to pornographic sites. You can be charged just like you can for Netflix or any of those things that are out there. You want to be want to view this? Sign up. We've got everything you should ever want. Pay per view, one hundred and twenty eight million dollars a year. Magazines, we talked about those just a moment ago, one point, no, magazines, one billion dollars. Which totals 2.6 billion to 3.9 billion dollars documented. That's above table. A year is spent on pornographic material. There's a pornographic site called Pornhub, which draws 25.8 billion annual visits per year. 81 million visitors a day, they're in the top 20 internet sites. You think pornography is not a problem? You know what they're having this year? I believe it's for the first time, as I did some searching again this morning and last night. This year, there's going to be a porn annual awards ceremony. Well, they're going to have these people who are in their movies. They've got their best actor, best actress. Why not have celebrate just like the rest of the movies do? And so this year, they're supposed to have that. Maybe they already have. I didn't jump deep enough into the information I was finding. But you think pornography is not bad? Do you think it's a good thing to have the keys of a city given to you? Oh, John, we're going to give you the keys to the city. Well, welcome to West Hollywood, California. Stormy Daniels, come on in. You can have the keys to our city. If you don't know who Stormy Daniels is, we, we can let you know. She's a porn artist. That's, that's, I won't get any deeper than that. That's the people we're giving to the key to our city. You know, I would have thought maybe Las Vegas would have had that. West Hollywood. Maybe what goes on in Vegas goes to West Hollywood. Huh? But can you imagine 25.8 billion visits a year to a site that's filled with pornography? The Gallup poll, and, and if you haven't ever taken a poll by the Gallup, I have a number of times. The Gallup poll, when they ask the question, is pornographic material acceptable? And I don't know how many people they actually asked. I didn't write those numbers down, didn't put them on here. Is it acceptable that 43% of all Americans said yes? That's it. We're getting close to 50% of all Americans say yes. 53% of all Democrats say pornography is acceptable. 27% of all Republicans say pornography is acceptable. 22% of people who call themselves religious say pornographic material is okay. You think we're not fighting a battle? People who claim to be religious say 22% is okay. Well, there's another place that did a poll, the New York Daily News. And the New York Daily News said 30% of women watch internet porn according to that study. <clears throat> Numbers higher for men. Men, we do a lot better than women. 70% of men. 70% of men. Don Blackwell, and I've meant to see if, and I'm guessing we do have the, the video, but if we don't, we can get it. World Video Bible School. He said, with the internet today, he said, you have so many more going to pornographic sites today than ever before. And he was asked why. And he says, because of its accessibility, its affordability, and its anonymity. Nobody's going to know that I did it. I'll delete everything off of my computer. I'll clear it out of the cache. I can do it in the privacy of my own home. I don't have to go to that. There used to be one in Omaha. It was an X-rated theater. 
Hodge, you don't have to go there. You can do it right here. You can do it on the smartphone. You can do it right there on the smartphone. You see, there's a problem with anonymity. There's only one person that I know of who can get away with anonymity. And I'll say she ran for president. And she can destroy her records and nobody can find them. But did you know that they have digital forensics? And what that amounts to with digital forensics, they're able to go back on your sites that you've visited. Don't even have to go to your computer. All they have to do is go to the connecting links. And they can start looking and identifying those sites. They can get that. And what they've said is they can do it with an exact science up to 25 years. Again, in, in the case of a woman who we won't name, they can't find anything of hers. She must have really did a good job. But they use this forensics. Did you know that they use... It, they use this digital forensics for people who are looking for jobs nowadays. You know, they look at their, multi, their multimedia that they have. They look at their different sites they're involved with. And then they, they can do a complete and thorough background check. And they can do that and look at your computer, your history, as you've fingerprinted throughout. It's expanded to investigate all devices capable of storing digital data. It goes back with the roots in personal computing revelation and back, back to the revolution back in the 1970s and early 1980s. And the discipline evolved in a haphazard manner during the 90s. And it was not until the early 21st century that the national policies emerged. Again, they said, no doubt that we can go back 25 years. But you know what I believe? What goes on stays on no matter how hard you try to delete your little fingerprints, your footprints, they can find you. They can look it up. We need to be aware of that. What happens in Vegas stays hard. Facebook, YouTube, forever. You know, people used to be afraid that the government was listening in on us, right? <coughs> I don't want the government listening in on, on me at all, so I don't give them out any information, don't do this, don't do that. And yet we put everything that happens to us from the moment we get up to the time we go to bed, where? On the internet for everybody to see who wants to see it. Or we might just say friends. We might say friends and family. We might say anybody and everybody. But you see, we put it up there. And it's there forever. Oh, it wasn't there. But you know, we see people put things up and they, oh, I wish I wouldn't put it up. You know what happens? If somebody's following you, a lot of times they'll take a snapshot of that picture so they can put it and document it and say, he denies it, but guess what? Here's a picture. Yes, we can say that it's not an epidemic, but it is. We have addiction. Chat rooms. Don't ever go to chat rooms. They'll get you in trouble every time. Pornography is available without even trying to find it in chat rooms, on Twitter, and Facebook, and YouTube. There's a lot of things you can't have on Facebook and YouTube, but nudity doesn't seem to be one of those that you can't have. We need to be aware of this. We need to watch our children. When we give them that little tablet, little handheld device, what are they really watching? I know they started out with the Bible, but what did they watch after you weren't looking. You ever hear of cyber stalking? S-T-A-L-K-I-N-G. Child pornography, extortion, child exploitation, sexting, online threats. That's what's happening here and now. That's not something that's, oh, it's in the future. There's addiction to <coughs> pornography and we need to understand it. The Kinsey Institute survey found 9% of porn viewers, viewers said they had tried unsuccessfully to stop. I'm guessing the number for cigarette smokers are probably higher than the 9%. But if you say it's not addictive, then why can't these people quit? 
9% of porn viewers said they tried to unsuccessfully to stop. Well, how do we fight against it? By following the scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter and verse number 22, it says, abstain from some appearances of evil. It doesn't say that, does it? It says, abstain from every appearance of evil. That doesn't say hit and miss. That says every appearance of evil we need to abstain from. In fact, if you go back, Paul wrote to the church at Galatia. And he said in the fifth chapter of Galatians, in verse number 19, he says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. You know, I love that word, and such like. In other words, if I didn't write it out specifically and tell you, this should be an eye-opener to you and such like. Get away from those things. Abstain from every appearance of evil. Solomon, who didn't heed his own advice at times, <coughs> has this to say in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 24 through 29. And I may attribute that to Solomon when I shouldn't be. But anyway, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. There it says, To keep from thee the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman, lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For my means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire into his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can he go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever touches her shall not be innocent or remain unpunished. Use of pornography is wrong no matter which way you want to look at it. It is the use of Satan. You know, we've talked about that in the past. What will get you and what will get me? Well, this is one of those things that Satan uses. In 1 John, the second chapter, and there in verse number 16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the Father, or the will of God, abideth forever. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. What are we talking? Pornography? Oh, that's not lustful. That's just art. We'll just call it art. But what should we call it? We should call it what it is. It is pornographic material. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 and 12 again says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but whether, rather reprove it. For it is a shame even to speak those things which are done of them in secret. Again, as I stated earlier, when we use this scripture, we look at that, those things we never even used to talk about. It was taboos. Oh no, you don't talk about things like that. And now it's there. It's at your checkout standard. You can go up to Walmart and look at those magazines that they have the checkout stands for your children to see and for you to see. And what do they have all this stuff on? Trash, garbage. It's, Satan is using these different things and these different products very effectively. Well, we talk about this lust, how Satan uses it. Lust when it's full grown, we have to stay away from. We don't want to be a part of that. As we're addicted to that pornography, we, won't want to, we don't want to run down that road at all. We should be exposing that work as what it is and let, it, let everybody know that we do not follow it. We must flee 
pornography. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 and 19. Better get in the right Corinthian letter. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. He says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? That's talking about the individual. Are we going to invite pornography into this temple that God has given us? Or are we going to say, wait a minute, there's a roadblock. We need to flee. Flee sexual immorality. If you take a look at what Thayer, Thayer says with this word, he says, it's metaphorically, it says to flee. It says to shun, to avoid by flight. In fact, it would be like we would say, you know, there is going to be an earthquake coming today and we'll guarantee you it's going to hit at 12 noon today and if you stay around you're going to be killed because this whole area is going to be flattened or let's say a big old huge asteroid going to hit Kearney, Nebraska and at 12 noon it's going to hit. What are you, what are you going to do? Are you going to say, well, I'll wait around and I'll take a selfie with me. Me and, you know, take a selfie with me and the asteroid. If you know that it's going to happen 1,000% sure it's going to happen, you're going to flee. You're going to run for your life, aren't you? You're going to get in that vehicle and you're going to get out of Carney as fast as you can. That's what the Apostle Paul is using in his words. He says, flee from it, run from it, get away from it. We need to run for our lives whenever it is presented to us. Albert Barnes wrote this about 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, and verse number 18, that reads, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. When we look at that, and that's, that's something that we need to realize. We've got something that's powerful that teaches us to get away from that pornographic material. The statement that Barnes makes, he says, the very passage of an impure thought through the mind leaves pollution behind it. When we look at pornography, where does it end up at? Oh, we get rid of it, but what's in our mind? Too late. Kind of like Ray Stevens, too late. She already been mooned. Remember that song? Too late. That's what happens with pornographic material. There are ebooks that are available for free from a site called covenanteyes.com. They also have programs to help you. If you're having trouble with pornography and you're doing it online, you're having trouble, you can pay them $12 a month. And what they will do is they will view your internet activity. And then once a month, they'll send you a report with every site you've visited.